Oh, yes, indeed. It is time for another Mark's Comic Haul. Y'all. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm running a little bit late. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I, I actually did mean to do this Wednesday night, and I just kind of got sidetracked. But uh, I got new this week comics, uh, which I'm going to go through. And then I also have a short haul of uh, 70 cent comics from Red Pegasus Comics. Red, you've heard me talk about Red Pegasus Comics before on Mark's Comic Hall, y'all. Um, one of my favorite shops. Great guys run that store. They have decided to close. And... Um, it's a variety of factors that it wasn't that they weren't doing well or anything like that. It's just, you know, life sometimes pulls you in different directions and I hate to see them go. They've treated me very well over the years, but, um, you know, sometimes I guess when, when you're ready, you're ready. So they're closing down, which means they have, they're doing a big 30% off sale, everything that's left in the store. If you guys are in the Dallas area, go to redpegasuscomics.com. And you can find out information about the store. They are open until November 20th. And everything that is in the store is 30% off. So, but they also have uh, a couple of boxes of 70 cent comics. So I'm going to show you guys those as well. Uh, so that's what we got coming up on today's show. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Mark Walters. This is Mark's Comic Haul, y'all. I do these haul videos usually once or twice a week. Kind of showing new books that I picked up and then sometimes some convention halls or other places I got halls from. Uh, if you guys missed my last episode, I talked about the exclusive Black Adam comic book. Uh, this was produced by Warner Brothers to coincide with the movie. It actually is a prequel comic. It has a prequel story about Hawkman's uh, kind of origins and then the origins of Teth Adam, who becomes Black Adam. Um, so anyway, I have several of these, which I'm going to be giving away at the Dallas Comic Show, which is November 11th and 12th. You can find out more information on that by going to DallasComicShow.com. So if you'd like to get your hands on one of these, you can do so at Dallas Comic Show. But as a special treat for anyone that goes by Red Pegasus Comics, I'm going to leave a stack of these with them as well. Um, so if anybody goes in and picks up something while they're doing their closing sale, you could probably grab one of these while you're there. So just a little something fun I wanted to do to kind of, you know, support those guys. All right, so new this week stuff. Um, we've got the previews, of course. Uh, this is the new DC previews, Lazarus. What is that called? Lazarus Planet, DC Universe Lazarus Planet. That's one of their big things coming up. Marvel's Sins Sinister, number one. Also promoting a new... Scarlet Witch, number one. I think this is an older previews. I, I'm not sure, though. Anyway, I just grabbed those just in case. All right, so we got DC followed by Marvel followed by Independent. DC versus Vampires, number 10. The Nathan Zerdy Supergirl cover. Oh, very nice. Very nice, yes. I like these Nathan Zerdy DC covers. He's doing a good job on these. Man, this cover, I pre-ordered some of these and then I ended up picking up, uh, wait a minute, I know I have more than this. Hang on a second, I think I'm missing some of the ones, or did I just get three? I thought I got like five of these. Hold on, sorry, just making sure I'm not losing my mind here. I could have swore I got like five of these, but maybe I didn't. Um, this is Harley Quinn number 23, the Lyrics Lee uh, cover B cardstock variant. Really nice cover. So the thing that's throwing me off is I pre-ordered like three of these, but I could have swore I picked up an additional two in the store. Maybe we'll find them as I go through my other comics. Uh, Punchline, the Gotham game number one. This is the Rose Besh cover. Now, it's funny because a lot of people were talking about this cover being a really hot cover. They had tons of these, but they did not have any of these. In fact, if I hadn't pre-ordered it, I wouldn't have got it. This is the Derek Chu. I think it's Derek Chu. Pretty sure it's Derek Chu. But, uh, yeah. 
and I actually think this is kind of a nicer cover, like, as far as, you know, between the two. That is Derek Chu, isn't it? I think it is. Mm, I know how to find out. Hang on. Let me just look that up really quick. Okay. Anyway, I was only able to get one of these. Um, and I wish I could have gotten at least one or two more because I really like how that cover came out. But, uh... Punchline. Yeah, that's Derek Chu. That's what I thought. Just checking my invoice because they listed on there. Okay, um, there's a couple of things mixed in here that are actually from, I guess, last week, but I got them late for some reason. All right, anyway, this is this week. This is Amazing Spider Man number 12. Uh, this is the, uh, what are they calling this? The, the blinds variant. But the big thing about this is it's the first, technically the first appearance of the Gold Goblin, or first cover appearance, I guess, of the Gold Goblin. Now, the funny thing is, uh, the copies that they got at the shop I went to were all damaged. I managed to get two pretty nice copies, but, ugh, man, Penguin Random House is just sucking when it comes to uh, the damages. It's, it's just, it's out of control. It's just so bad. Every week, every week, Marvel Comics are getting damaged. And I feel bad for the stores, because, like, in, in what you're about to see in a minute, uh, Crypt of Shadows, I finally got some of those in. But, like, my shop last week, their copies were so damaged that they didn't even put them out. They were just like, we're not going to try to sell these to our customers, because they're just too damaged. So now they're hoping that they get replacements. I'm hoping they get replacements, too, because... Uh, I had ordered some, and I want to fulfill what I ordered. This is Avengers, X-Men, Eternals, Judgment Day, a.k.a. Axe. This is the, um, what is this, number six? Hang on a second. Yeah, number six. Um, okay, so this is the, uh, why am I not seeing it? Art Germ cover featuring Dazzler. That seemed like a hot cover this week. I managed to grab three of them, or I pre-ordered some of them, so made sure I got them. So these I actually picked up at Bedrock City. I was down in Houston last weekend for a one-day show, and Bedrock City had these, and so I grabbed them. They had a ton of these, but apparently these are sold out in a lot of stores. This is Crypt of Shadows, number one, cover A, and the big hook here, well, it's twofold. One, you got this really cool Moon Knight on the cover, but the reason I think a lot of people are going after it is because you've also got uh, Blade's daughter right there. What is it? What's her name? Bloodline? Is that her name? I can't remember it. Yeah, I think it's Bloodline. Anyway, um, first cover appearance of Blade's daughter. She first appeared in the Free Comic Book Day comic. Got three of those. Um, and I'm hoping my shop will get their replacements in so that I can, uh, buy some from them. This is cover B, uh, by Ryan Brown, uh, and it's a really nice cover B. Now this I actually got from, uh, Titan Comics in Dallas, and then I also got this from Titan Comics. This is like cover... D, I think, uh, who did this? Is this a Stegman, Ryan Stegman featuring Morbius? So yeah, so finally got my Crypt of Shadows, which I should have got last week, but like I said, damages. Speaking of damages, I got a couple more coming up. I'm going to have to try to swap out. So this is, uh, I got another copy of Moon Knight number 16, the dual variant. I just think that's a really sexy variant. I think Mike on Comic Crypt to Castle Hill showed that off too. That's my second copy of that. Moon Knight, number one, the Werewolf by Night. Uh, well, this is just like a one shot, but it, it features Werewolf by Night. So I thought that was cool. And, uh, or it's an annual. Sorry, I don't know why I said it was a one shot. It's an annual. Uh, New Mutants number 31, this was another book that almost every copy they got was damaged. I got one 
undamaged copy and uh, Arthur Adams variant cover. Just a really, really nice variant featuring, um, was that Moon Dragon? But yeah, really, really cool. I love these Art Adams variants. He is just, he's killing it on these things. Okay, now talking about damages. Um, this is Strange Academy Finals number one. I did not realize it when I picked these up, but both this cover, there's a little bit of damage right up here. It's like a creasing crinkle thing. So I'm going to see if I can swap that out. I'm going to go back up to my shop tomorrow, see if I can swap that out. This one, I probably won't have as much luck with because I don't think they got any extras of these. This is the uh, Superheroes Trading Card Doyle Dor Dormammu um, variant cover. And unfortunately, this one has some major crinkling right up here. It's hard to see, but it is very damaged. And I did not notice that when I picked it up. So I'm probably screwed on that. I doubt they'll be able to get a replacement for it. It's just so frustrating. I I really wish somebody could figure something out with uh, Penguin Random House because every week, every week, books are coming in damaged. And I, I feel bad for these stores because they probably don't know what to do about it. It's like, well, okay, so do we not sell it? Do we not put it out for the customers to buy because it's damaged? And then hope that we get replacements. And then if we don't get replacements, then they just never get their book. So it's a really crappy situation for them to be in. And then you got guys like me who are great snobs that, you know, I, I want to have everything in mint. And, um, you know, it's really hard for me to just kind of bite the bullet and, and get it when it's not. The variants number four, uh, I love this throwback retro style cover. And uh, this features the first appearance of all these Jessica Jones variants. I love the trade dress, corner trade dress, corner box. Um, anyway, last page, first appearance of all these Jessica Jones variants. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere or not, but, you know, it's kind of a fun book. Good art by Phil Noto. Here's another Art Adams variant. I pre-ordered this. Uh, it's a good thing I did because they had no copies for the shelf. This is X-Men Legends number three, featuring Longshot. Really cool Art Adams variant cover. This is uh, Cinderella the Tooth Fairy uh, number, um, I'm sorry, Grim Spotlight Cinderella Tooth Fairy. Uh, I don't know what number this is, though. Does it say it on the cover? Maybe it's just a one shot. But I, I just got this because the Ivan Tal uh, cover I thought was pretty sexy. And I saw some people touting this as being like a hot cover of the week. So I was lucky enough to grab one because I think they only got one for the store. Criminal Macabre, Count Crowley, uh, From the Pit They Came. Uh, this is written by Steve Niles and David Dasmalshian, who you may know as the Polka Dot Man in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Uh, he actually, he is the one that created this Count Crowley comic book. So this is a crossover with Steve Niles, Criminal Macabre, and Count Crowley. Cal McDonald. Love me some Steve Niles, who may be at Dallas Comics Show next, what is it, December? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing a show in December, we're doing a show in November as well. But anyway, uh, this is a new book from Boom Studios called Damn Them All. Uh, Charlie Adlard uh, did the artwork, and there were several covers for this book. I just grabbed the foil. Uh, I think there's two different foil covers, and anyway, this, as you can see, it's a foil. That's the back. So, yeah, I'm interested to see what that's about. You know, Charlie Adlard, I, I like his art. Great storyteller. Uh, I got a copy of this because this was a book a lot of people were talking about and it's already gone into second print and I found Titan Comics still had a couple on the shelf. So I grabbed a copy of 10,000 Black Feathers, number one. I think this is my second copy of this book, but this is a first print and it's already gone into second printing. 
So that's kind of cool. Vampirella Strikes, issue six. Uh, this is a cosplay variant featuring Ireland Reed on the cover. And I always see Ireland at shows, and so I'm hoping that maybe I can take this to one of the shows she goes to and get it signed. But um, yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice Vampirella cover. <laughs> I don't normally buy cosplay covers, but when I do, they feature Ireland Reed. No, I'm just kidding. Um, honestly, I don't really go for cosplay covers very much. I, I, I think I have that. And then there's a Deja Thoris that's got, uh, my friend Valerie Perez is the model for, and that's probably it. Oh, I think I do have one with my friend, Ricky Lakoti. Uh, she's on one of the ones I have. I, I don't remember which one that is though. Uh, this is... Uh, a couple of things. So, so that's all the new this week stuff. So everything you're going to see moving forward is either some interesting back issues I picked up or stuff from the 70 cent comic sale. Not, not a ton of stuff. It'll be quick. Um, I grabbed this copy of Swamp Thing number 79 featuring Superman. Always liked this issue. And you know, they just put out that Dark Crisis, the Deadly Green book which has got a Swamp Thing, Superman, sort of a crossover thing in it. So I just thought it, it, this was fresh in my mind. I just thought I would grab it. And then I got a copy of the Swamp Thing Annual Number 2, which features the first appearance of, or first cameo appearance of Justice League Dark, but it's kind of an unofficial cameo. But I did not realize when I bought this, this copy is rough. And uh, I guess I just didn't look at it closely enough. But this is kind of a... I don't know if you can see it through the bag, but it's it's a pretty well-read copy. So I eh, kind of was disappointed when I got home and realized that, but oh well. It'll be a nice, fun reader. When I was in Houston for the one-day show, which was Bedrock City Comic Con, uh, run by Bedrock City Comics in Houston, best store in Houston, um, at least that I'm aware of, cause I don't really go to other stores, but I know there's other cool comic shops in Houston. Like, uh, uh, my friend Jim, Jen has, um, oh God, what's the name? Space Cadets comics in Houston. So there's great comic shops in Houston, but Bedrock City, I, Richard Evans, who owns it, I go way back with him. Like we've known each other for like 30 years and Michael Steenburgen, who's the manager of the store, super nice guy. So I was at their one day show and I saw a book on the wall and I had seen it before. And I asked them, I said, Hey, do you guys have any more of those? Cause I knew it was a bedrock city exclusive cover. And they said, yeah, come by and we'll, you know, we'll hook you up. Well, they didn't just hook me up with that. Uh, I managed to get three different bedrock city exclusives that they still had copies for sale. And, uh, one of them, I actually got two, I got a, a unsigned copy and a signed copy. So this is Sandman, uh, Sandman Presents Lock and Key. This is the Bedrock City exclusive featuring artwork by Mark A. Nelson. Mark is known for his work on the original Dark Horse Aliens comic book. And this is just a really cool exclusive that he did for Bedrock City. So I got one of those and then they were kind enough to let me get a signed copy as well. Mark A. Nelson is going to be at Dallas Comic Show November 11th and 12th. So if you guys are in the Dallas area, you want to meet Mark. If you have any of those original Aliens comics, bring them by. He'll sign them. Uh, then I also got... <laughs> I'm saving the book that I asked them about until last because I think it's the coolest of the four. I also got... Because the book that I asked about was covered by Terry Moore... Um, and they said, well, did you know Terry did another cover for us? And I was like, well, what's that? And they said, well, it's this Archie comics, number one, the all new Archie number one. And this is a Terry Moore exclusive, uh, Terry, of course, known for his work on strangers in paradise, Rachel rising, uh, just love Terry Moore. I've known Terry for a very long time, but I did not know that Terry did that. And then here's the one that I really wanted, um, and this is the one that I saw. They had it on the shelf. I had seen it before, but I did not know that this was like a Bedrock City exclusive. I guess I had never asked them about it when I saw them in person. So this is Grim Fairy Tales, the Terry Moore 
Bedrock City Comics exclusive. And as you can tell, it looks kind of like an old, uh, <laughs> almost like an old Schomburg, uh, you know, Planet Comics cover or something. And man, this is just, I mean, this is great. Look at this. I mean, this is just phenomenal. So super, look at the colors on that. So happy. So I think they still have some of these at Bedrock City. So if you guys are interested, uh, reach out to Bedrock City Comic. What is their website? Is it Bedrock City Comic CO? I think that's it. Look up Bedrock City Comics in Houston. But yeah, man, they have really cool stuff. And uh, so I was very, very happy to get those. Okay, so now we're getting into a very quick uh, 70 cent comic haul. And this is from Red Pegasus Comics. So all these comics were 70 cents each. And they still have like, I think two or three boxes of 70 cent comics available. Their store is open through November 20th. If you're in the Dallas area, everything in the store is 30% off. Stop by Red Pegasus Comics in Bishop Arts District. Be sure and call them first because the I, I know that their hours are a little sporadic now because they're in the process of closing down. I think they're only there on certain days of the week, like I think Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe. I think that's right. Maybe it's Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Anyway, Red Pegasus Comics. These are part of their 70 cent comic sale. So we've got World's Finest number six, uh, featuring Robin, the Flying Graysons. First Flight of the Flying Graysons. This is Dark Crisis, uh, Superman, number one. Flashpoint Beyond, number three, featuring Subject One. I bagged and boarded all these, by the way. Uh, Supergirl number one, Supergirl Rebirth number one. Yeah, most of these were raw. They did not have them bagged and boarded, but surprisingly in very good condition. So Amazing Spider-Man number four. Some of this, I think, was just random new issues that they had left over. They kind of worked them in to the stacks. Uh, Defenders Beyond number one. Just really like that cover with America Chavez, Doctor Strange. Fantastic Four, number 37. This book has a first appearance in it, I think, but I can't remember. Is it, or is it that Ben Grimm adopts this kid, I think, in this book? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Hulkling and Wiccan, number one. Hulkling and Wiccan, number one, the Impeach Momoko variant cover. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's not, it's not a ton of stuff. I mean, I think I got like six bucks worth or no way, not six bucks. How much was it? I don't remember. 70 cents each, I'd have to count. Uh, Marauders, number 21. Just like that White Queen cover. I guess that's the Hellfire Gala variant. Yeah. Marvel Voices Pride, number one. Loki cover. Marvel Voices Pride number one. The is this Jen Partell? No, I can't remember who this is. I'm sorry. Marvel Voices Pride number one. I I can't remember who did this art either. That's a cool cover though. Marvel Voices Pride number one. Uh, Again, I'm sorry, I'm at a loss on who the artist is, but it's a nice cover featuring Angela. Or for those of you that used to watch Who's the Boss, as Tony Danza would say, Angela! Moon Knight, number 15. 
like I said, some of these I think were just new issues they had left over that they worked into the boxes. Uh, what is this? X Force number 29? Does that say 29? Yeah, 29. X Force 29, the Hellfire Gala variant. This is. X-Men, I think it's X-Men number seven, the trading card variant featuring Sync. The back's got the stats on it. X-Men number 12, uh, the Hellfire Gala variant featuring Cyclops. Really shocked to see this in there, and I was glad because I never got just a regular cover for number one. This is Creep Show, the new Creep Show, number one. So very happy to get that. Very happy to get this as well. 80 page giant Geiger number one. Features that throwback to the old DC comics with the go-go checks at the top. Really like that. And then last but not least, uh, this is Star Trek Picard, Stargazer, number one. And uh, also got myself a copy. I somehow missed this when they originally had them, uh, but this is uh, Ryan Brown's, uh, I'm sorry, not Ryan Brown's, um, or yeah, Ryan Brown. Charles Soule and Brian Brown's Curse Words, number one. And this was part of their uh, road tour. Uh, so this is a hardback, but it's actually an exclusive hardback. And there's Red Pegasus Comics right there. So yeah, happy to get a hold of that. Does it say, I don't know if it says, yeah, it's got like the little road show little thing there. So yeah, really cool to, to get one of those. Very happy about that. So, and, uh, I think they have a couple of these left, I think. Um, so you might want to ask if you go by there. So guys, that's it. That's my haul for this week. Um, nothing earth shattering, I guess, but, uh, some fun books and yeah, I hope you guys are getting all the stuff you're looking for and I hope you're, you know, finding some great deals and whatnot. Uh, again, I do want to plug... Dallas Comic Show, which is coming up November 11th and 12th. Got a lot of really cool f people coming in for that. A lot of fun stuff going on. Going to be giving away a ton of stuff from Black Adam. Um, so yeah, and I will have those comic books. We're going to give those comic books out for Black Adam. So if you uh, want to get your hands on one of those, you know, that's a good place to do it. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. That's all I got. I... I I, it's kind of a small week for me, I guess. Um, but yeah, fun stuff. So grab yourself that Harley Quinn cover. And if you find that Derek Chu cover, I would grab that too. Because like I said, it, it doesn't seem like many people have that. Um, went to a couple of shops and they were both sold out. So yeah. And then this, of course, really like that. If you can find a copy that isn't beat up by Penguin Random House. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Uh, I didn't realize my video is almost 30 minutes long, so I'm going to skip the shout-outs. I'm Mark Walters. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Take care.